another day, another vlog. I am now blonde. Er, I would call this a full blonde. Um, because I was brown, it kind of like couldn't be my usual, but that's fine. This is life. Nothing is how, how you expect it to turn out. <laughs> it is Sunday and it's very cold. So I did like kind of like a little workout this morning and then I had a workshop online. I hydrated. My favorite thing I've been drinking recently is just ginger slices and hot water, like ginger tea, but what I've just been doing is ginger slices in hot water. Um, and I'll like add hot water once or twice and the ginger just keeps keeps delivering <laughs> like you can recycle a little bit and so that's been super um kind of like warming because it's winter so I've been, I just had a big pot of that I'm gonna go make I think a Caesar salad I just bought romaine and I have an amazing dressing I like to put on it it's like a store-bought one but it's really clean um and then I'm gonna go for a walk because now it's I think negative um four three or four only and it was negative 10 earlier so this is like the perfect time of day to go out um and then i'm gonna see my cousin i think this evening um and her boyfriend um i'm not 100 percent sure what the plan is but that's kind of my tentative plan and then honestly i think i'm gonna start packing for mexico city because I leave in six days and usually I feel like within a week before a travel is a safe time to pack. Um, so I'm going to start just like throwing things in a suitcase. I've already started to put some stuff in like a carry-on bag, but I'll feel like I'll bring get my suitcase out and start packing. Um, so I'll show you little snippets of what I'm working on today. For breakfast, I made a yogurt and chia bowl. So it's got cashew yogurt mixed with protein powder and then chia seeds mixed with protein powder and water kind of like half half and then my homemade granola with blueberries bee pollen cacao nibs and almond butter all of these just here <laughs> usually I never kind of like hang out in workout clothes I honestly just like don't love how leggings feel um, but that's what I decided to wear today and it's actually kind of cozy. So I just have a set from Lulu Lemon and then this cardigan is from Holtzweiler. It's like a more sustainable, I think, German brand. Um, so just wearing that and then I'll probably put on like, um, I have these girlfriend kind of like running pants over top of these because it's cold and I'm going to go for a walk and, um, Probably just like a crew neck or a warmer sweater, maybe a hoodie. Um, so that's what I'm going to put on. And then I also wanted to talk about the salon I went to. So the salon was so lovely inside and just like simple and minimal. Um, it's on King Street in Toronto. It's called Antidote. And um, I'll, I'm going to insert a few clips here just like briefly of what it looks like on the inside but it's really cute and um a nice experience so i recommend it if anyone is looking to try a different salon <laughs> Caesar salad and a giant bowl. It's so yummy. Just having my quick lunch in my room. My giant bowl of Caesar salad. It's vegan Caesar salad. It's so good. And then I also have a couple carrot sticks and some little nacho siete chips. These have been my kind of like chip of choice for the probably the last five years and I used to not be able to get them in Canada so I would like go to the States or order them from American shops 
Um, I feel like now I'm less like excited by them because you can actually get them in Canada, but salad first, lots of greens, and the vinegar from the dressing is really good for blood sugar and the fiber of the um, green leafy greens. And then those have some more carbs in them. So to have those after is better for blood sugar and energy and creating that kind of like stable energy level throughout the day. And then also walking is amazing. So I'm gonna eat this and then go for my little chilly sunny walk. Chips are my guilty pleasure. I feel like that's a bad word to use, but chips just get me. Like healthy chips. So I literally can't stop eating my sietes. And holy chips. Look at that. Beauty. I just so I used to open a bag of chips with like a partner or something. My sister, whoever I was with, um, or a friend, and I would like only eat the folded ones. Um, those were just like the ones I wanted and <laughs> it was a good way for me not to eat like a full bag of chips, which is also very fine to do, but maybe not like every day. Um, but yeah, so my, my sneaky like obsession and I just still, to this day, I'm into the folded chips, so. Boulder chips get me, Siete's get me, because I'm leaving Canada soon. Mexico is not a chip country. They, except for like tortilla chips, you can't get good chips there. Um, I remember being with a friend from Canada and we went into like a corner store and she was giving me a rundown of like even the same brands. I feel like Doritos or Lay's, if you buy them there, they do not taste like they do in Canada um, or in the States. And she was like, the only like safe chip you have is like, or like chip, is like popcorn. Um, and you can always make, make like popcorn yourself, but I went to Whole Foods yesterday and I got these and then I got some like kettle chips um, and like a few other things that I like, but I was like, okay, things stocking up, having my little snacks that I like before, who knows when I'll get them again. <laughs> so this is my, silly pointless like food chat but highly recommend if you've never tried to see it, just get them and yeah okay now it is time for my walk i will listen to i'm listening to um the four hour work week by tim ferris i've never listened to it and it came out in 2009 but um because i am like i work remote i felt like it was a really good job it was a bit like entrepreneurship and like almost being, oh, I don't know what word they use, more effective with time instead of, I think, efficient is like not the one they focus on. I think it's effective and just like in starting a business or whatever, but like it's about the shift away from office environment to working kind of for yourself. And honestly, like a big focus is on it is like travel and working from anywhere. So because I was working, well, I've been working remote for the past um, year and a half, but now I'm working like fully for myself. So I feel like it's very relevant to me, especially as I build my own business. Uh, so I'm audiobooking that, but then I also have a lot of podcasts I like to listen to. So I kind of go through a rotation, like for podcasts, podcasts are almost more like fun and engaging to me. It's almost like you're chatting with your friends on the phone. <laughs> um, or it's obviously not like that, but it feels a little bit more like that, like more interactive in a sense. Often also if it's like an interview going back and forth or like something you listen to often, kind of like getting a catch up. So I'll do like a podcast or I'll listen to an audiobook. Um, for the audiobooks I listen to on my walks, I like them to be more of the fic uh, nonfiction and like educational because usually I have like good energy so I'm absorbing information well um and when I move I kind of get like kind of get like motivated so yeah on my walks I'll do like more educational audiobooks and then I always also have non-fiction on the go but those I always read before bed um and so that's kind of my little like routine around 
book, book consumption. Um, but yes, I'm so always curious about new podcasts and book recommendations. So please toss them down if you have any. Um, in terms of nonfiction right now, I'm reading Before Bed, The Midnight Library, but I just downloaded a bunch of other books um, on my Kindle. I have a Kindle. I was reluctant to get into it, but now I've had it for a couple of years. But um, I fully do embrace it and love it because with travel, like you, it's just it doesn't make sense to bring paperback or like hardcover books, like real physical books, because they take up so much room and um, they. It's honestly like, it's a toss up. It's kind of like a, a, not a waste of paper, but like like trees are used in creating books. Um, but then for Kindle, there's like the lithium, lithium, I think battery and the labor that goes into it. So there's an ethical question there. Um, and then also I, I, like, what is the light from the Kindle or e-reader do to your eyes before bed? If you're reading it before bed, I always have mine on night mode and like the dullest brightness. And I actually haven't had any issues with sleep, but, um, that's definitely a thing. So I feel like you can't, you almost like can't win in anything, but yeah, right now I'm reading the Midnight Library on my Kindle. What else did I do? Oh, I downloaded, I think it's called Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. That one was supposed to be an amazing one for 2022. It was like on a lot of people's best book lists. And then also Christodora was also on a lot of best book lists. So I also downloaded that. So those are the two ones that I'm kind of excited to read soon. I also just finished um, Pachinko and that one actually started in November and I finished, I think at the very end of December or early January. And I had no idea how large of a book it was going into it because it was on my Kindle. So I couldn't like tell the actual length. And yeah, it took me a long time. Like it felt like a long time. Usually I feel like I, I'll finish a book in a couple of weeks or a couple of days, depending on how short it is. Um, but that one, it was a good one. I recommend it, but you have to be prepared for the length. It was really interesting because it takes place in more or less in um, Japan from begins, I think around 1900, maybe 19, going in 1910. Um, and then it goes all the way into like, I think it must be the 80s when it ends, um, but it kind of follows these, this Korean kind of like family through the generations, but with one kind of main character being in most of the book, um, who starts out as like the daughter or she's not born and then it it lasts until her, she's the, like a grandmother figure. Um, so it's it's really cool and they're Korean and in, in Japan. Um, and it overlaps the war and then obviously or second world first world war second world war both wars and then continues and I felt like I learned a lot culturally about what was going on there um, even from like a racism lens and uh, it, I've always I've been to Japan twice and I've always wanted to go to Korea and this book made me want to go to Korea even more so that's Pachinko. And I also saw that there was, um, I think there's like a TV show on it. So I will, like, I'd be interested in, to watch that. Um, because it was a well-written book for sure. Uh, and I always look on Goodreads for like what books are rated. And I usually will read, or I'll prioritize reading books that are like over a, a four out of five stars. Um, maybe I shouldn't, but like, I mean, that's just worked well for me and that's kind of how I find the books. But Yes. Um, Pachinko was, was a cool one. Other books from the past year, past two years. My favorite book of all time probably is um, The Song of Achilles or Song of Achilles. And I cried and I don't cry too much during books, but like that one, I think I want to reread because it was just amazing. I just loved it so much. Um, and then another book that I read recently that I also got emotional with, or I cried was, is it Little Fires Everywhere? No, 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 no. Um, oh man. Okay, wait, I think I can find it. Give me one sec. I'm looking on my Notion on my laptop because I organize everything in here. I have like, a, and I have list out the ones I've read, but the last year, I 
We Are Liars. That one was a very interesting book. Um, I liked that one. I read that, I think, in October. Also, in terms of, I guess, more like auto, not autobiography, but um, nonfiction, The Almanac of Naval Ravikant was stunning. I loved it so much. I audiobooked it um, and I probably finished it in like three days on walks in December. Highly, 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 <laughs> I really can't speak. Highly, highly recommend that book. Um, that was a really good one. But if you guys are interested in books, I am so happy to chat more. I always do. I always kind of have like my two books on the go. There's always books that I haven't like gotten through. One that I have not gotten through and have been on and off with for a number of years is Sapiens. Um, and some people like highly recommend it. I was started paperback and then I returned to a paperback and then I returned to it or like did uh, continued or maybe I restarted it audio booking it like a year ago after starting it like five years ago maybe four um and now I'm probably like I must be halfway but that one I just haven't been able to finish but I feel like if I return to it now I might um enjoy it but yeah Oh, another, my, another top book, Song of Achilles, okay, I mentioned, and then also The Prophet, hands down, it's like a very thin, um, short, it's kind of like, almost like Rules to Live by in Life, by Khalil Gibran, and I think it was written in, um, the late 19th century, I could be wrong with dates, but, oh man, that one is just like a, a like, yeah, like a life book, highly recommend that one as well. I could I could keep going on about books and I'm like looking at my list of ones I've read in the past year over here so I'm getting distracted I will stop now but those are some good ones and that's what I'm currently reading and now I will go off my book. My hand is about to fall off because it's so cold but I've been voice noting <laughs> so using my fingers on the walk and that's why but um it is just so oh I get distracted all the time the sun it makes such a difference you can't fully tell there it's blue sky um just how sunny it is but it's just like night and day yesterday and today have been sunny in comparison to like the past two weeks it's literally been gray every day except for one day um Low, low battery but it just like oh, it makes such a difference and it's so lovely and like yes cold but the snow and the sun it's a beautiful day you're wrapping up my walk in the sun and i have made the conclusion that the sun makes me feel like i'm on speed like it legit is such a crazy mood enhancer that it's like no wonder I've been trying to leave Canada and go to a warmer place for most of the year. Um, it's been beautiful and I'm so energetic. Best decision of my day. I just did that Aztec green clay face mask and then did a HABHA and my skin feels so just like clean you know that like clean feeling um and then I moisturized a little bit of a tanner to give me some glow and I will still wash my face before bed but I have a couple hours to go I'm gonna just kind of have a quiet evening um I just ate dinner and I will um probably start a little bit of packing I'm gonna film more so next video I'll add some packing stuff, just like tips how I do it for long-term stuff, what I like to bring, eco options. Um, and then I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I will close the vlog off here, but appreciate you. A like, subscribe, add comments, share what you're interested in, share books, share anything at all. I would love to hear more from you guys. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.